an auteur as uh, you get them in America sometimes. An extremely talented filmmaker, very classical but modern at the time. And uh, he came to cinema thanks to his passion for uh, Francis Ford Coppola. He discovered uh, his films when he was young. But originally he wanted to be a painter. And uh, with Little Odessa, he was already noticed, his first uh, feature, and he was already noticed with his film in leading international festivals. He came to Cannes with his second film, The Yards, and here he is back again in the official competition with the third film. So the, the, night, uh, the nighttime scene at the end of the 80s, and you remember, of course, Studio 54 on these nightclubs uh, springing up uh, in the 70s and the 80s, so Joaquin Phoenix. Photographs are calling out for him. Major actor, John Phoenix, a massive actor. Why did you choose this particular period? What interested you about this period? Well, it was a period in which uh, New York was in great danger. It seemed almost as if the city was falling apart. I mean, today, New York is almost antiseptic in a way. And back then, it seemed as though the existence of the city was at stake. So it's a very dramatic period, and that's really why I chose it, because the stakes seemed so high. Qu'est-ce qui était dangereux à cette époque-là? What was dangerous at the time? What were the dangers? Well, the city was verging on lawlessness, you know, and uh, police were under siege, and uh, narcotics, drug trafficking was everywhere. Uh, crack cocaine, in particular, was rampant, mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't think that uh, the city had a handle on what was going on. It's almost. The, I think New York got blindsided by the crack epidemic, and crime was just rampant. The truth of the matter is, you don't want to have to admit this, but the flip side to all of that messiness, that danger, is excitement. And of course, I mean, this, the, the scene in New York was hopping. I mean, I, I grew up in New York in the 80s, and so in a way it was a way for me to plunge the kind of autobiographical elements, you know. And I knew the world very well, and of course it was a very explosive, energetic, very interesting time. And a lot of different social classes mixed mm. also in New York. Today it's very much Manhattan is exclusively mm. for the very wealthy, which wasn't the case in the 80s. And I think that of course led, led to a certain excitement, absolutely. Your character, Joaquin Phoenix, is actually living something which is really very exciting and he's got this incredible uh, story, this incredible arc in it. He starts as a nightclub owner and then bit by bit he, he, he gets involved in this sort of straitjacket in a way, uh, you know, but going towards a uniform. How did you work on this character who sort of guides the whole film through? How did you deal with this character? First of all, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> this might be a good movie. Um, <laughs> honestly, I have no idea. I really, there's no planning in what I do. It's really entirely up to James. I just simply show up and try to remember the lines. So I don't, I don't really know what that's happens. That's completely ridiculous. It's a total lie. That's that's <laughs> accurate. Thank you for trying to make me appear intelligent. But they <laughs> know. Accurate. Yeah. yeah. Ava will be honest. Yeah. No, no. He's one of the most I, thoroughly James, prepared James, actors James, ever. Il improvise ou pas? What happened? Vous improvise. Do you improvise? Do you improvise on the on the set? Do you improvise? Yes, but it's always cut out. <laughs> that's completely <laughs> untrue. He ends up on the cutting room floor. No, he improvises a ton, and it all winds up winds up in the movie. You know, I was just in great hands. You know, James Gray directing me, pushing me, uh, you know, challenging me every day. And then Joaquin Phoenix, the most amazing actor of my generation. I'm sorry, it makes you feel uncomfortable, but I think he is the most amazing actor of my generation. But how and many people have you worked with? Like, four. That's it. it <laughs> so like, what okay, you want to know who I've worked with? No, Johnny no, Depp, no, Will no, Smith, no, no, Denzel no, no, Washington, no, no, okay? Josh Boyd. You have to accept compliments, Jackie No, seriously, oh, yeah, you've got to accept compliments, Jackie. I know he doesn't want. I don't care about him right now at all. He's amazing. He's an amazing actor. He taught me about work ethic, and he's a, he's an amazing actor. How did you How did you come into the film? I mean, and do you improvise as well? Do you improvise? I was driving down the str uh, the road to the to the film festival in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I got a call. SOS call from James Gray would I come up and take over because I guess a certain guy wasn't working out <laughs> I had written the role for you though you're, yeah, you're, you're I know a... but I, I was busy at the time and then you handed the phone over to this guy and this maniac gets on the phone <laughs> and said would you please come up and then, and then like when I came like up the, 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 the yeah. help, help the guy he didn't relate to me hardly at all this guy just he tried to fish fight me all the time and yes, well, what Bobby improvised. But it was uh, good for the relationship. But, you know, but, the relationship. Yeah. but that's all part of the film, isn't it? That's, that was for the film. But what do you think? What do you think about James Gray's films, Robert, Robert Duvall? 
I never saw any of them yet. Oh, no, I saw them all. He's yeah. terrific. <laughs> Jimmy Kahn, James Kahn, said he's the best young director he'd worked with since Coppola. And I, I'll second that. 